What is up you guys? For today's video, we are going to be trying out the new ColourPop Main Squeeze palette for their birthday this year, and I'm just so excited about this palette. I really love the color story of it. I think it's super pretty. So I cannot wait to share with you guys the look that we are going to be creating today. So off camera, I did already prime my eyelids and set that with a skin tone colored eyeshadow because your girl wants to be prepared. But I seriously just think that this palette is just so pretty. Like I keep on looking at it and just think it's so adorable. I just really like these monochromatic palettes. I think they're so cute and I just really like the hard packaging and the cute little design on the front. I know somebody in the comments is going to be like, girl, why do you have your hand on the mirror? And like, girl, my hands are so small. It is really hard for me to hold up a palette. But I also want to make sure that when I do hold up a palette that I have it in the same orientation or at least try to. But with that said, the first shade that we are going to go into is called Froze. It is a beautiful, kind of like pinky, kind of matte shade. And I'm going to go in with its BH Cosmetics number 8 brush out of the festival set. And then with this shade, I'm going to be adding it into my crease, blending it upwards towards my brow with these little circular motions, and also using it to round out my outer V. And then with these little circular motions, I'm just going to be buffing it upwards because we do want kind of a really dramatic eye today. But she's pigmented though. Like on a first layer of like a peachy pink, like that is really, really pretty. So once you have that applied, the next shade that we are going to go into is called Like It's Hot and I'm going to go in with this Sigma E25 blending brush. So before I apply this shade, I do want to show you guys how I'm going to do it. But as you can see, this brush is really big on one side and then it's kind of pinched on the other. And it's still a really fluffy brush, but as you can see, I only have pigment on the one side. So with this brush, how I'm going to apply it is I'm going to have the pigment go into my crease and then the side that has no pigment on the brush, I'm going to have it kind of towards the lid of my eye. So as you can see, like I have the pigment going upwards and then the no pigment towards the lid. And then I'm just going to be applying this directly into my crease and doing like little back and forth motions with little circles to blend it in and to help deepen up this crease. And I'm also using it to kind of round out my outer V a little bit. But like dang though, I really like this shade. It is so pretty. It has like that like watermelon-y kind of vibe to it. It's super, super pretty. It has like, it's like pinky kind of red and it's not like too pink, not too red. It's just a really, really beautiful shade. Not to mention, like it is super pigmented. So once you have that applied, the next shade that we are going to go into is again like it's hot mixed with a little bit of red bottoms and I cannot believe that they named the brown in the palette red bottoms. Like girl, why did you do that? So they should have named this one like it's hot the opposite in my opinion at least because red bottoms we all know what they look like and brown color right here is definitely not it but i'm just going to mix the two right here to a one to one ratio on a morphe m507 brush so with these two mixed i am going to be applying them into my crease doing back and forth motions and also using it to round out my outer v the reason that i mix these two is because a lot of times like the deeper shades that ColourPop makes they give me like this really harsh kind of band in my crease and it is like super super hard to correct so that is why I'm mixing the two to see if I can get like a better blend with it. But so far these look really nice, but we do need to blend them out just a little bit as well. And to help me get rid of this really harsh line that I have right here in the crease, I'm just going to take a little bit more of like it's hot again on that Sigma E25 brush. And I'm just going to start doing back and forth motions right over that harsh line to try to soften it. I'm hoping that this works, but a lot of times with these ColourPop shades that are this deep, they just give me this really weird band. So I'm crossing my fingers. But as you can see, I still have it. I really wish that they would reformulate these shadows because like they're darker ones. They just give me like this really harsh line. You can even see it. It's like right in here. It's not like super noticeable, but it's definitely there, especially like when you look forward or if you look like really close up in your looks. But I mean, it's not awful, but it's still enough that you can definitely notice it. So as always, I am going to show you guys how I correct this. And what I'm going to do is take a little bit more, again, of like it's hot on that brush that we just used. And I'm doing back and forth motions right on that harsh line. And I did grab additional product on my brush. And as you can see, I'm like really going in on that shade too. Like you want to go to town pretty much. I'm doing like really big circular motions. I'm just really trying to blend it out. And again, on that Morphe M507 brush, I'm just going to take a little bit more of that combo and then apply it right into my crease and into my outer V because when I did just apply that like it's hot shade, I did lose a lot of that depth. And I do want to just kind of bring it back. So I'm just doing all these like little circular motions and try to like blend it out and just get some more definition because I really like like looks that have a lot of depth to them. I think they're just really beautiful. And then once you have that down, I'm just going to take whatever is left on that Sigma brush and then go right over the edge. 
So as you can see, after we did that, we have gotten rid of a lot of that harsh line in the crease. And it is definitely really softening up. It's really nice, actually. A lot of times I do have issues with these types of shades from ColourPop, so I'm really excited that this one is softening up and giving us a really nice blend. But either way, off camera, I am just going to do the other eye, and then we'll get back to using more shades in this palette. Normally I'd go in and do a cut crease, but I know a lot of you guys out there are getting sick of me doing a lot of cut crease looks, so I'm going to be doing something a little bit different today. And the next shade that we are going to be going into is called Home Slice. It's kind of like a shimmery red shade, and I'm going to be going in with this Anastasia A4 brush. And then with this brush dampened, I'm going to be applying this shade to the lid. And I'm really like pressing it into, I'm not doing back and forth motions, I'm really like pressing it on. This red on the lid, though, is so pretty. I really like it. It really reminds me of the Sugar Pill palette that I got years ago. It's called Feline Fancy. It is the most beautiful, cute little palette that I have. It has, like, a little cat on it, and it's Valentine's Day themed. And in that palette, there is a red metallic shade, and that shade really reminds me of the one I have on my lid, which is one of my all-time favorite red shades. It's just a most beautiful kind of, like, red metallic. It doesn't have glitter in it. It has, like, this beautiful wet sheen on the lid. And this shade has near identical, the exact same effect to it and I don't know I really like that shade a lot so I'm so happy that this one's similar to it and then to help me blend out the edges of that red metallic I'm just gonna take that little combination that we have of like it's hot and red bottoms on that Morphe M507 brush and I'm just doing like little circular motions just around that harsh line just to get everything looking really nice clean and just really nice and blended so I do want to share this with you guys because after I started doing the other side of my eye, I've been having a lot more issues than when I did the other side with you guys. But as you can see, like, I was blending on my shadow and I have, like, some patchiness and, like, it just looks really weird. It almost is, like, the product kind of, like, lifted up in my outer V. And you can also see I have a really harsh line from that um, red bottom shade right over in here. It's definitely not cute, but how I'm going to fix that is, again, I'm going to take the little bit of, like, it's hot mixed with a little bit of red bottoms, again, just doing a one-to-one -one ratio, and then I'm taking that and, again, putting that into my crease and trying to, like, fill in that, like, little kind of, like, patchiness spot that I have going on. Like, just try to, like, fill it in just to make things look a little bit more even. But as you can see, like, I just have a lot of harsh line, like, right in here. It looks really ugly. And then what I'm also going to do is take a little bit more of Like It's Hot again on that Sigma brush and then go right over that edge. It just, it doesn't want to lift up for me for some odd reason. Like you can see, like it just, it doesn't want to move at all. And I'm like really like doing my little circular motion kind of jam. But I don't know, I didn't have as many issues on the, the other eye, but somehow, like, maybe I didn't, I mixed in, like, too much of that red bottom shade or something. But it's, like, really finicky to move. Like, you can see it, it just, it doesn't want to lift. And it's just, it's so patchy looking and kind of weird. And then also, when you, like, blend these shadows out, sometimes it seems like they kind of, like, dust out. So you can see, like, it just kind of, like, moved around a lot, and I don't know. I don't know how I feel because this eye was like giving me like a really easy time but once I started the other eye it just gave me a lot more issues. So I don't know how I'm really feeling about this palette at this point. Honestly though, I did try to fix this outer edge as good as I could but I don't know. I can't get it to where I want it to be. It's just going to be good enough. But with that said, the next item that we are going to go into is the Super Shock Shadow in the shade Birthday Treat which I am so excited for. I think it's so cute. This one I got for free of my order when I ordered the palette. But isn't that beautiful? It's like a really pretty like rose gold shade. I think it's gorgeous. As you can see though, I haven't even swatched it. So we are going to go in with this. And I do want to show you guys this up close, but isn't that gorgeous? Oh, I just love it. I think it's so beautiful. I just put a little bit of this on my ring finger and I'm going to be pressing it on into the center of the lid. I really like pressing it on too. I don't know how far I'm going to get because I have nails on, but hopefully we can get a really nice blend. But, ooh, that's actually really, really pretty. And I'm just going to take a little bit of this on a smudge brush from Makeup of the Day. And I am going to start pushing that right in the center and then start buffing it out on the edges. Just to get it blended into everything else. But so far, this is really pretty on the center of the lid. So here's where I'm at right now with the look. And I really love that birthday treat shadow in the center of the eye. I think it gives it like a wet type of look. And I think it's so pretty. But off camera, I am just going to apply foundation and all of that. So here's where I'm at right now with the look, and then for the lower lash line, I'm going to take this Anastasia Beverly Hills Dark Side Liner, and I'm just going to line right underneath my lower waterline. And then I'm just going to bring it down just a little bit, not too far. 
but just kind of smudging it just a little bit into my lashes. And then before that liner sets, I'm just gonna take a little bit of Like It's Hot on this little smudge brush, and I'm just gonna start smoking out that black into the red. And then also when you're doing this, make sure that you connect this outer corner, otherwise you're gonna look really crazy. And also, you don't wanna bring this down too far either, otherwise you're gonna look like a panda. So you just wanna find out what works for you. For me, like, where kind of, like, I get a little bit of my dark circles is where I like to bring mine down to. But you have to figure out, like, what works for your eye shape and you personally. Not gonna lie though, I am feeling this look so much. Like, I really, really love it. I think it's super pretty. I haven't worn a like all red look in forever, so I'm really enjoying this look so much. And the next shade that we are going to go into out of the palette is called Juicy Fruit. I don't know if it's gonna be light enough for an inner corner, but we shall try. And then with my brush dampen, I am packing the shit out of it in my inner corner, like really, really heavily. And I'm also bringing it underneath this little tear duct area as well to open up the eye. It's like a little trick I like to do with inner corner highlights. But I mean, like, she's cute, but I don't think she's bright enough for me. Like, I think that this look is so, like, dramatic that the inner corner highlight is just not bright enough. I feel like, though, if you had deeper skin, maybe it would be a really bomb-ass one for you. But for me, since I'm really fair, I think it just kind of makes my eyes look more closed than, like, open. But I mean, like, she's cute, but just not for this look, in my opinion. Okay, but like real talk though, I don't know what other shade I could have used in my inner corner because the only one that's kind of different is Juicy Fruit. This one's a lot more gold. And if I would have went in with Maraschino, this one's really pinky. And it looks like a lot of the other shades that we already used. And I don't know, like this palette just doesn't have a good inner corner highlight, which is a real big bummer because they could have done like a rose gold and that would have been gorgeous. And it's just a big bummer for me. But either way, I'm just going to go in with my highlighter and then I will kind of brighten up the eye look a little bit. So the palette I'm going to be using today for my inner corner highlight is this Sleek Solstice Highlighting Palette. It's one of my absolute holy grails. I'm going to be going in with this peachy kind of shade right here on a Sigma pencil brush. And then the, with this shade, I'm just going to pack it right on top of that Juicy Fruit shade. Just to kind of brighten it up a little bit. But yeah, so here is the finish, like using the ColourPop Main Squeeze palette, and I love this look so much. It really reminds me of my high school days. I was so into like the whole emo scene goth type of deal. It was totally up my alley, and like dark, rich, like smoky eyes were my whole obsession back then. And I think it just really reminds me of that, and that's why I like it so much. But with that said, I do want to share with you guys my thoughts and opinions about the palette. So first things first, let's go over the packaging. And I think the packaging of this palette is so cute and really adorable. It is watermelon red with gold accents. I mean, how cute can it get? And this palette is also plastic if you have never tried out a monochromatic palette. And also, this one, if you haven't ever used one, has an amazing mirror. It's super clear, really high quality, and it is the size of the palette, which is awesome. I will say, though, my biggest gripe with these palettes is it feels like they're Russian manufacturing because the sticker on the back is always kind of off-centered. I don't know if you guys can kind of see it. it. Like, it's pretty noticeable. And again, this is something that's super picky and not a big deal, but I just want to mention it because it just makes it feel like it's rushed, and I don't know if I like that or not, but again, it's not really that big of a deal. Even though the packaging of this palette is so stinking cute, the most important thing is the eyeshadow formula, and the first eyeshadow that we are going to go over is Red Bottoms right here, and I really wish that they would have named it something else because Red Bottoms for Red Eyeshadow would have been perfect, but with that said, this shadow gave me the most problems out of all the other ones that I used in this palette. I feel like it was just so hard to blend it out in my crease. You can even see on this eye still, I have a really harsh line and I have some patchiness. Not to mention, it was just one of those shades that's just really hard to work with. I have a lot of problems with with other ColourPop deep matte shades, so I feel like it's just their formula. Either way though, this one was definitely not my favorite shade in the palette. However, with that said, the shades that I really truly enjoyed were the reds in this palette, like the true reds, you know, like Home Slice and Like It's Hot. These shades right here are honestly amazing. Like they're really pigmented and super easy to work with. A lot of times when I use red eyeshadows, they can either be way too pink or just honestly, they have a really strange formula. But these ones were really nice, super easy to use, and honestly, even beginner friendly. The biggest disadvantage to this palette, in my opinion, is a lot of the shades look super similar. When you really look at it, Home Slice and Like It's Hot look near identical. This one called Froze and these two down here look really similar. These two look similar. It's just a lot of the shades are just, they just look like you have like a ton of the exact same one, which is a real big bummer because this palette is so cute. But again, if you use this palette alone, you're going to be feeling like you're doing the exact same look each time, which is a real like kind of disadvantage in my opinion. 
And one thing that I really wish that this palette would have included is like an inner corner highlight. Whether that is like a champagne pink shade or like a like rose gold shade, I feel like it would have really complemented this palette well. Not to mention maybe even like a darker red shade, you know, like an oxblood would have been gorgeous in it. Either way though, I do understand it's a monochromatic palette. I just wish that I would have had a little bit more of a tone difference in it. As for the Super Shock Shadow and Birthday Treat, I think this shade is so pretty. It is like the most beautiful glittery rose gold shade. It is absolutely stunning. I seriously cannot get over it. If you are somebody that likes those type of shades, I would highly recommend picking this one up. So when it comes down to it, I would definitely recommend checking out this palette if you have been on the fence about it, or if you are somebody that is looking to get into red eyeshadows and you have no idea where to start, this palette would be honestly perfect for you. I mean, yeah, you don't get a lot of different types of looks that you could do with the reds, but either way, I still feel like it's a really great affordable option for that. I will say though, I do not feel like this palette is a dupe to blood sugar by no means. I feel like the tones in both palettes are way different. However, if you are looking for a similar type of vibe or you're looking for like maybe a more affordable option before you invest in blood sugar, definitely check out this palette first. So I do want to show you guys these palettes up close and next to each other, but honestly, I feel like there is so many differences between the two. I feel like the ColourPop palette is a lot more like coral, whereas the blood sugar palette has just so many different types of reds, it's kind of hard to pinpoint it. Not to mention blood sugar has like literally anything and everything that you would need in it, like pinks, purples, darker purples, literally everything, whereas the ColourPop palette just is a little bit more coral, has a lot of those like brown shades in it, and I just feel like there's no similarity between the two. But either way though, I feel like the ColourPop palette would be a really nice affordable option if you are looking for that, or if you are looking for something that kind of has like a similar vibe to blood sugar. But yeah, so in the comments down below, let me know what your thoughts are on this palette. And as always, I would really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button down below. And if you would like to follow me on Instagram, my Instagram account is at lethal underscore kitten. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And until next time, bye!